Hi guys, this is Sadek from Robin.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Flex UI GSI ROM based on Android 15 on any Android phone. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First and foremost, you will have to download the Android SDK platform tools. This is the official ADB binary given by Google and is required for ADB command. So get it from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You may extract them anywhere you want. In my case, I've done the extraction in C drive. And these are the files of platform tools as you could see. Next up, you will now have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required for ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now enable both this toggle. For that, go to the settings menu on your phone. Then go to about phone or about device. Go to version and tap on build number seven times. In case of Xiaomi phones, you will have to tap on OS version seven times and you will get a prompt that you are now a developer. Once that happens, Go to settings, system and additional settings or about phone and you should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. Once you enable debugging, you might get a toggle. Tap on allow. Likewise, you might also get an RSE key prompt. Again, tap on allow. And in Xiaomi phones, you will have to wait for 10 seconds before you could tap on OK or allow. So once you have enabled the debugging toggle, let's now verify the debugging connection as well. So go to the address bar of platform tools folder, type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch command prompt inside platform tools. Now type in ADB devices and make sure that you're getting an ID. If you're not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official USB cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB fixes and make sure that you're getting an ID. Once you're getting the, an ID, your next course of action is to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do note that unlocking will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void as well. If that's well and good, you could defer to a guide and the video and get this job done. In short, just boot your phone to fastboot mode. Use the fastboot flashing unlock command. You will get a prompt on your phone. Use the volume key to highlight unlock the bootloader and press the power key to confirm. With this, the bootloader will be unlocked and you, your device will undergo a reset and then boot to the OS. Once it's boot to the OS, make sure to re-enable USB debugging once again. Next up, you may now download the latest Flex UI GSI ROM based on Android 15. So as you might be aware, in particular, the GSI ROM usually comes in various variants and various forms. And they have the ARM64 architecture or A64, BGN versus BVN and BGS as well. And some are VNDK Lite, whereas others are non-VNDK Lite. So which one to download? Well, as of now, in case of Flex UI, there is only one available GSI ROM, which is the ARM64 architecture. The B, B is for system as root, G is for Google Apps, so the ROM comes inbuilt with Google Apps, and N is for no super user. There is, the ROM is not rooted by default. You will have to manually root the ROM via magic or kernel issue after flashing it. So with that said, get hold of the ROM zip file from here. And once you have got the ROM zip file, you will have to extract it as well. For extraction, it's highly recommended that you use the 7-zip software because the inbuilt Windows software does not tend to work in some cases. So choose show more options, 7-zip, extract to Flex UI, and it will give you the GSI ROM, which is the system.img file. So let's wait for a few more seconds. And okay, so let's move ahead with the next step in the meantime. So now you will have to get hold of the VBMeta file for your phone. Make sure to download the same file, which is currently installed onto your phone. For that, you will have to get hold of the SOC firmware which is installed. So you may verify the same via the build number of your phone. So go to the settings menu about phone. And from there, you may go to the version and have a look at the build number. As you could see in my case, this is the build number CPH 244711A11. So download the entire firmware which corresponds to the exact same build number. And then you will have to extract the VBMeta file from there. In case of Xiaomi phones, you have to download the fastboot ROM. Then extract the .tjz file via 7-zip and you will get a .tar file. Again, extract the .tar file and you will get a folder something like this. Go to the images folder and from here, you will get the VBMeta file as you could see. In case of Pixel phones, you will have to download the entire factory image. And in, inside the factory image, let me show you, you will get this a file something like this. Go there and inside that there will be an images zip folder. Go there and then extract the VBMeta file from there. In case of OnePlus, the firmware will be in a zip format, but upon extraction, you will get a payload bin file. So 
So you'll have to extract the payload bin file via Fastboot Enhance tool. I will link that tool in my guide. Then simply launch the Fastboot Enhance tool. Go to Payload Dumper, click on Browse, and choose the payload bin file. Click on Open. And okay, so you might have to restart the tool as well. Let me close the already running version of the tool and relaunch the tool from scratch. So go to payload dumper, click on browse, choose the payload bin file, click on open, go to the partition tab and choose the VB meta file from here. So it should be this is the file. Click on allow incremental and click on extract image. Choose the location and click on OK. And it will then extract the image as you could see. Let me show you on the desktop. I have done it. And this is the VB meta file. It should be somewhat here. This is the file as you could see. So you will now have to transfer the file inside the platform tools directory. So let me do that as well. So this is my OnePlus 11 firmware and images. And inside that I have to get hold of the VB meta file, which is this one. So copy both the vbmeta.img and gsi rom inside the platform tools directory and so let's have a look at that as well so let me now transfer the rom zip file inside the platform tools directory as well which should take just a few seconds so this is the flex ui gsi rom copy it from here and let's transfer inside platform tools so now we have both the vbmeta and the gsi rom inside the platform tools directory and we could now flash the rom file for that, first and foremost, you will have to boot your phone to fast boot mode. So open the CMD window and type in ADB reboot bootloader and hit enter and your phone will now reboot into fast boot mode. This might take a few seconds. So let's just wait. And once it's in the fast boot mode, type in fast boot devices and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. If you're not getting any ID, then you'll have to install fast boot drivers on your PC. I made a separate guide and a video on the same. You could refer to a guide and get this job done. So let me show you, this is my guide and the video. So install the fastboot drivers and once that is done, right click on the windows icon and choose device manager. Then expand the Android phone section and make sure that the phone is being shown as Android bootloader interface. So this as well as the serial ID next to fastboot signify that your PC is able to read the phone in fastboot mode. And we are now good to go ahead. So now your first course of action is to disable the verification check. And for that you have to flash the VB meta file on your phone. So copy the command given in my guide, paste it here and hit enter. And the verification check has been turned off. Now you will have to boot your phone to the fastboot D mode. So type in fastboot reboot fastboot and hit enter. And the fastboot D screen will vary depending on the phone that you are using. For instance, in the screenshot, it, this is shown as a pixel phone. And in my case, it's the this screen is. So if you have installed the PWRP recovery, then the fastboot D screen will be shown something like this inside the recovery that is completely normal and nothing to worry about. So with that said, let's proceed ahead and flash the ROM file. So do know that again, I'm repeating this PWRP recovery will only be shown to those users who, ha who have a OnePlus phone and have already flashed a custom recovery. On the other hand, if you haven't flashed any custom recovery till now, then you will get the stock fastboot D mode. So with that said, you will now have to remove the product A partition so as to make space for the GSI ROM. So type in the command and hit enter and the product A partition has been removed. Once that is done, you will now flash the GSI ROM. So for that, you may simply use this command fastboot flash and then the partition name which is system and the file name system.img and hit enter and the flashing of the GSI ROM will now start which could take up to around a couple of minutes and as you could see the GSI ROM has been broken down into 11 sub smaller system partition and each of these five will now be flashed onto your phone and the entire process will take only around a couple of minutes so let's just wait for the flashing to complete so guys the last file is being about to be flashed and once that is done you will now have to do a format data as well which will wipe off all the data from your phone so the flashing is now complete so let's now wipe the data for that type in fastboot space dash w and hit enter and the wiping is now complete and you will now reboot your phone to the OS. So type in fastboot reboot and your phone should now reboot to the newly flashed GSI ROM. Do keep in mind that the first boot up will take up some additional time which is completely normal and nothing to worry about. Moreover, let's just wait for the boot animation or at least the boot logo to appear. Either of which will signify that the flashing has been done successfully. So the first boot up will 
take up some time and let's just wait for the boot logo to appear and this should appear after the screen itself if the flashing has been done without any issue and as you could see we have got the flex ui boot animation so let's wait for a minute and then the setup screen will appear so guys we are now inside the setup screen let me quickly set up the rom file let's skip the initial setup process if you want you may connect your phone online and restore all the data as of now i'm skipping this just to fasten up the entire process which will take a few more seconds and with this we are now inside the android 15 based flex ui gsi rom the ui looks quite great and the files icons are also quite interesting to see if we go to the theme section okay so it's a wallpaper and style so as you might be aware it follows the dynamic color engine whatever theme you choose from here the same ui ux color will be implemented across the entire screen as you could see the changes are being implemented and you may also choose more colors from here as well and the same colors are being changed in the entire os as well so there are quite a lot of options and you could also choose from these colors as well and as you could see the changes being implemented there are many colors from here as of now let's go with the default theme of this rom and you may also enable the dark theme as you could see over here but that is not in sync with my requirement i usually go with the light theme in these roms and you have the option to change the wallpaper from here on device wallpaper so lock screen and home screen let's go with the lock screen adjust the position and angle of the lock so as of now there isn't so you could drag and change the wallpaper positioning behind the clock as you could see and once that is done just hit the apply button likewise you may do the same with the home screen as well simply scroll it and adjust it accordingly and apart from that these are the icon shortcuts which we will make changes from the settings menu you could also do the changes from here as well for example you could add the any icons of your choice in the lock screen this is a new option in android 15 so let's add the camera at the bottom left and the dnd mode at the bottom let's say camera bottom left and the dnd at the bottom right and they are now added let's go back and this is the wi-fi icon styles there are a couple of icons to choose from as you could see and not only the Wi-Fi icon, but the entire Bluetooth, DND, battery saver, auto rotate flashlight, all the icons shown in the status bar will be changed if you choose these icon style. So this is the Kai, which I guess was a part of the Samsung OS in the initial days. Let's tap on apply and it will be implemented. Once that is done, let's go back and have a look at the font style as well. These are the various font styles that you could choose from. Let's go with the slab and hit the apply button and the font has been changed and there are a few other lock screen options as well you could show or hide a few privacy options in the lock screen add the text of your choice for example let's say dwight win and tap on save and then you may also add the shortcut which we have already done then you may enable the buttons as well and show time and info in the lock screen let me now show you the changes as well so this is the aod wherein you could see the time and the notification and the date and this is the lock screen wherein these are the notifications and in the bottom you could see the name Dwightwin which I've added next to charge so if I unplug my phone it will show the Dwightwin name at the bottom as you could see over here anyway let's unlock it and let's go back and apart from that let's again go back and let's access the other UI aspect this is the QS tiles of the ROM let's access the settings menu and first off we have the phs triple settings and depending on the oem you might get some extra features as well in case of oneplus first off we have the default mode for the color display mode don't change this if you don't have much knowledge about this then you may also enable hbm the high brightness mode and then if you want to use the otg device you have to enable this toggle as well so that the phone might be able to read the memory and storage of the device likewise you may also enable double tap to wake but this usually tends to conflict with the roms ui and ux so it's recommended to keep it disabled then there are a few qualcomm features so if you are having any camera issue you may enable this then apart from that there are a few other tweaks as well so let's have a look at miscellaneous tweaks again all of these are advanced level tweaks and only enable them if required so if you are facing any display issue then go to force fps and choose the 1080 at the rate of 90 fps this will fix all the display issue but it will 
limit the fps as well to 90 hertz and also lower down the resolution you may also increase the fps and the screen resolution but that will lead to some issues and your device might get overheated the best is to enable the dynamic fps and the fps will automatically change depending on the task that you are using and apart from that again as you could see a few additional tweaks are there if you are using a gcam and if it's not working along the expected line you may enable the camera to api toggle from here then there are a few telephones bluetooth and other tweaks as well then the IMS features are mostly for the 4G and LTE issues. So if the, let's say, usually in India country, I have seen issues with Geo in uh, GSI ROM. So in that case, you may force the presence of 4G and request IMS network as well. And there are a few customization tweaks. This section does not have too many customization, but let's have a look anyways. So this is the icon shape. And if I go with square circle and as you could see, it's implemented circle and square mixed then i can pack then we have a font family which we have already changed from the settings menu or rather the wallpaper section we have already changed that then you have a few audio effects as well so from this is from the oneplus dolby and qualcomm the aosp and the nxp software so all of them have their own sets of tweaks you may enable the required one and then verify the result as well and apart from that is the same ui ux that you get across the all the AOSP ROMs and as you could see it's currently based on the latest Android 15 build. Let me show you this. This is the Easter egg as you might be aware. So guys on that note I round up this video. If you have any queries with regard to any of the steps do let me know in the comment section and let me show you a couple of other home screen tweaks as well. If you go to the home screen then you may enable the notification dots. Add new app icon to the home screen then you may enable the theme icon from here. This is what I was looking for. So let me have a look. The theme icon is currently not enabled. I don't know why. Maybe it might require a system UI restart. When it comes to restart, there is no system UI restart. You only have the entire restart. So after implementing this, the home screen uh, theme icons, you will have to do a restart. So guys, regarding the theme icon, I found out that if you try to implement the theme icon from by long pressing the home screen and choosing the wallpaper and style, and if you do so from the home settings page, then this might not work so instead you will have to use the wallpaper and style section so go there select wallpaper and style and now you may enable the theme icon from here now you do so and as you could see the theme icon has been implemented and apart from that you may also change the number of apps shown in the app drawer for example let's choose a higher grid 5 plus 6 okay so we only have two options that's quite interesting i haven't seen such a low number of options anyway you could either choose from 4 cross 6 or 5 cross 6 let me go with the 5 cross 6 one and apart from that these are the only two things that i wanted to share with you and you may add the widget software choice as well as i, or I already shown you these are the various clock widgets as you could see from here let me go with the analog clock and choose a style from here so this is the clock style and that's just about it you may change its settings as well by dragging it in the widget settings and choosing a different clock if required. Anyways guys, that was just about it. So guys, with that, I round up the video. If you still have any queries with regard to any of the steps, do let me know in the comment section. And thanks a lot for watching.